So again, um, is there a role for NGS? Uh, do we have issues? Yes, we have issues, but I would call them as unknowns and not so much as issues. As Lord Kelvin said, to measure is to know. If you can measure it, you can improve it. We are not measuring things, and I think we're moving the direction of improving them and addressing them. One of the points that's brought up by a lot of people who are uh, anti-NGS, they will say it's too sensitive. And we know it picks up a lot of organisms and circumstances that we know are not infected. Again, don't forget, we just talked about it. This could be part of the microbiota. That signal is true. It is there. That's the DNA. It's not a false positive. We just need to understand what to do with them. Here is a paper that shows the microbiota of the shoulder uh, joint. This is a Canadian study, very, very uh, interesting. Uh, Karan and Sam have just finished the uh, microbiome studies of the knees and hips. Interestingly, there is an individual differences. Val was asking that question. Yes, there is uh, individual variations. A lot of organisms here are unknown to us, like i would never heard of Rallistonia. And then the other thing is that we sort of saw a little bit of a signal is that if the patient has had multiple injections, maybe their microbiome is a little different than somebody who hasn't. And if you are pushing the microbiome towards pathogenic profile, that could explain why some papers are showing an increased incidence of infection after multiple injections in these patients. The next question that comes up is it's not sensitive enough. And many people talk about the Duke study. As much as I love uh, my friends at Duke, I could look at that paper and I will actually analyze the data a little differently than they had done. Uh, you can't use culture as a gold standard. That's the issue. That's why we are here. The whole day here, we're talking about culture is not the gold standard. So you can't use culture to measure how good NGS is. Compared to culture, it's not going to win because culture has a lot of issues. Yeah, is it, is it uh, not sensitive enough? Yeah, about 10% of the cases that we just told you, we're missing the organism in an infected case. So you're not gonna send your samples to Microgen DX and 100% of the time in these infected cases, get an organism. 10%, 15, 20% of the time, the signal is gonna be negative. That's when you pick up the, uh, the phone, call Nick and tell Lip, Nick, this is infected. I don't know what your threshold uh, you're choosing, what you missed out on the bioinformatics, et cetera. Can you please reevaluate it for us? And he will, and he will give you a signal. The other thing that you have to do, sampling is really, really important. That's why Karan showed you that video. That's why Marcus and DX is invested in finding that flat swab. By the way, that flat swab and may have been missed in the presentation was selected out of many, many different fabrics that were evaluated in that M4T study. It is a double woven proprietary swab that comes from some country, very expensive, but it apparently has the promise of picking biofilm, DNA from biofilm. So hopefully sampling properly and also sending those to Microgen DX will address them. 10% issue. And by the way, when you are sending your samples down to microbiology, as much as I love Mike and all the microbiologists, they pick and choose, they pick the best ones for themselves, and then they send the scraps to Microgen DX. And then they wonder why Microgen DX didn't pick up the organism. So very important for you to engage your microbiology lab, your ID doctors, especially in some of these circumstances where the patient suffers from a very, very severe infection, Honestly, I think your NGS signal is much more likely to be informative than culture. We talked about this, too many organisms. Yeah, there are. Fortunately, majority of the time, many of these organisms, that, as Dr. Segretti just said earlier, respond to same antibiotic. There are times, though, that you have a gram negative and you might even have a fungus or an atypical organism that requires the addition of another antibiotic. Would I do that? Well, I'll tell you what, if I have a patient who's undergone six prior operations and now NGS is picking up five, five organisms, absolutely. I will be on Dr. Belden's case. I will ask her to treat every single one of them. Why? The stakes are high in that patient. That patient fails again, they're getting amputated. They might even die. So what is wrong with giving them another antibiotic? People say antibiotic stewardship. Believe me, you don't have to teach me about antibiotic stewardship. I was on CDC guidelines for four years. 
I got brainwashed, and uh, rightly so. I know about antibiotic stewardship. But in that circumstance, you're pouring all that antibiotic into cement. You're giving them six weeks of uh, antibiotics, adding another fluoroquine or another oral antibiotic to cover that E. coli or pseudomonas signal is absolutely necessary. Are you kidding? If that's my joint, I want you to treat it because I've already failed multiple operations. And now, all of a sudden, you're becoming observer of antibiotic stewardship. And by the way, the same people who talk about antibiotic stewardship are the ones that are pouring kilograms of vancomycin into wound. So if you're asking for data, ask for data in every circumstance then don't forget that NGS signals that were ignored that we talked about earlier, it can come back and cause later failure. I'm not saying this is for every revision, but if you've got a complex infection, a majority of you on this call are here because we know that you treat with a lot of challenging cases. We know that you're in the forefront of dealing with these infected cases. That's why you're invited. Believe me, these polymicrobials are probably real. And I think they can cause reinfection at a later time point. I am a believer in VBNCs now after Mike has taught me in two different sessions. I honestly believe some of these may be the VBNCs. This is uh, Bonnie Bastler, incredible microbiologist at, at Princeton. She talks about the community of bacteria. In fact, Bill Costerton used to have a uh, talk that he used to give it cigarette smoking, etc. He also believed that majority of these infections are polymicrobial. One of the organisms is taking charge and leading the orchestra, but as soon as you get rid of that organism, let's say Staph aureus, the others, the VBNCs or the silent ones, can then emerge to the surface and cause a later infection. How do I know the organisms are real? Is the DNA real? Is, the, is it a live bacterium if, if it's not? I don't know if I know the answer, but I can tell you that if you have an infected case and you sent that uh, to NGS and it picked up an organism, consider it as real. That's the first sample that I sent to NGS about four or five years ago when Rick Martin came to, to Philadelphia and took me out for dinner, which was a very nice dinner. And then we talked about this and I said, Rick, you got to create evidence. I don't believe this is going to work because we did this multiplex PCR work with Garth Ehrlich and Bill Costerton, we were seeing a lot of organisms. The first case I sent to him is that this Streptococcus canis situation. And this patient was sick. He was intubated in intensive care unit, dying. And when we discover this, we go back there, we treat the patient, and the patient leaves the hospital. So the signals in an infected case, I would consider them as real. And I think that's very important for us to know. The other uh, thing I hear mostly from hospital administrators, non orthopedic surgeons, you know, we put in uh, expensive implants. Some of these implants are six, seven thousand dollars. Two hundred dollars is not much money for us. But administrators say, well, it's too expensive. Why would I send NGS on every patient? Why would I have that additional cost? The cost is around 250, 300. We just talked about this. You saw this graph. The cost of um, sequencing has come down extensively. And I think uh, when you're sending like six, seven samples to Microsoft DX, the, that's not treated at each sample at this cost. It's really cost per patient. I would argue in some of these complex revisions, perhaps in some of these as, as, as septic arthritis patients undergoing primary joint replacement, uh, some of these infected unions, some of these spine fusions, pseudoarthrosis, et cetera. Those are the circumstances that I think the cost of NGS is definitely definitely justified. And as Albert Einstein said, not everything that counts can be counted and not everything that can be counted counts. I think we have a lot of great things and these discussions are really very, very important for us as we move forward to improve the care for our patients. Thank you very much. I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna have Karan and Dr. John come up here to talk about what are the uh, solutions, uh, how are we solving these problems?